And this is how we welcome you to Artistic Spot, a show about art, talent, and entrepreneurship, where you are also the artist. In Artistic Spot, we're actors of our movies, singers of our musicals, and writers of our books. In Artistic Spot, you are also the artist. Today, we have a very special guest. We're joined live from Favo by Steven Taylor, an artist. Steven, thank you so much for joining us in Artistic Spot, episode 95. Thank you for being part of our story. Thank you very much for coming here and doing this. We love your studio, but before we go in depth on the paintings that are around, talk to us a little bit about your story, how you ended up painting. Well, you know, the story about how I ended up painting is, is pretty short. I started painting as a kid just for fun, and I just continued painting um, with whatever I get my hands on. Um, I ended up painting in watercolor because I had to put everything away every day. I never had any place to stay and, and keep my stuff up. So every day before people came home, I'd have to put everything away and hide it away. And if you're painting in something that takes weeks and weeks to dry, then it's not going to work. So watercolor worked great. I could paint. By the time people came home, it's dry. I put everything away. I hide it up under the bed. <laughs> then, then the next day when I have some time, I can pull it out and keep working. So, you know, I had all of these paintings um, in watercolor and they all just lived under my bed. Um, it was the pandemic that we've all just went through that kind of put, you know, a, a big stop to a lot of the things that I was doing. Um, you'll notice most of these paintings are of ships. That's what I was doing. I kind of painted on the side. I was running these school ships all over the world. The pandemic happened and all of these things stopped. And I came here from the sea to help my parents. And I started painting and painting and painting because I had no more ship to run. And um, in the meantime, I met this wonderful girl who lives down here. And in my time that I'm spending with her, I saw this crazy looking place. And, you know, she had no idea what it was. Nobody that I knew knew what it was. So I came in, I wandered back around into the parking lot and I found this, this place. I met Will and um, I ended up with a place to put my, my paintings up. And now I have a place to paint and I don't have to put it away every day. And one of the more surprising things that I found were all of the people here that are also doing the same thing. And in the process of trying to figure out how to do any of this, all of these people come around and a lot of them have been on your show already and you know how amazing they are. Yes. And they just come around and say, what do you have? What are you doing? Where are you stuck? What is that? Here's an idea. What's your idea? And it's, it's, it's Favo. So now, Steve, before going back to Favo and your experience with this amazing studio that you have here for the past three months, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. So, Steve, why hiding your pieces? <laughs> why know. you decided to paint them in watercolor and then put them under the mattress? Yeah. Why that and not showing this amazing artistry and talent that you have to the world? I never thought that any of it was really, I, I don't know, I didn't think people would be that interested in it. I never, I never gave it a second thought. I, all I could think of was I have something in my head and I have to get it down. And I have it in my head and I have to get it down. And I have to get it down and I have to get it down. And I would get it onto the paper. And once I got it all onto the paper, then you know, okay, now I finally got that out of my head. So let's get, let's put that away because here's another one and it's coming on through and I got to get that one down. I got to get it down. I got to get it down. And eventually that one gets down. I put it on the bed um, just to keep it out of the way. And I n just never thought of it any other way than that. I never had any exposure to anything like this. I just, it, it's in my head. I've got to try and get it down and then see what the next one's going to look like. 
It was until I came here that I realized I, I got this place in my mind, just like everything else that happens to all of us, especially during the pandemic. I have no idea why anything is happening until afterwards, right? I thought this would be a place where I could get these things out of my head and I wouldn't have to put everything away every day. It turns out I can put things on the wall here. I can put lights on them and these other people that are making such amazing things in this place want to come and see my stuff too, which is mind blowing to imagine. But you know, everybody's working together here to, to keep moving forward. And it, it's been mind blowing. It's mind blowing to see this. I mean, it's, until I got this room, I, no, no one had ever seen all of these at once. And now they're all up. So now, Steven, is there a difference between the Steven before getting to Fabo to the Steven that it's actually sitting right next to me now telling your story? I think I change every day now. Um, you know, I've spent my whole life running ships. That was what I did. And I, you know, I hung on to that. I mean, that was, that was my identity. And, and, and I still run ships when I can. It's getting better every day with the, with the pandemic. But once I realized everything is shutting down and I, I came to my parents' house, and once all of that started to change, then I start to change in some amazing ways. For instance, none of this was my idea. And when you're running a ship, a lot of the things as the captain are my idea. And I have really good people and everybody puts their input in. But as the captain, that is pretty much my vision and I'm driving everything in a certain direction. Once the pandemic happened, I started to realize that I am not in charge of this stuff anymore. I don't know what's going on. The pandemic has shut things down. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what I'm going to do next. I don't know what's going to happen next. I don't know what any of this is leading to. And one thing happens, another thing happens, another thing happens. And I've learned from day to day to, I guess, see things as they're flowing instead of trying to move that flow in a productive way, mm -hmm. I can feel that flow and now I'm part of something that's happening that I can go with. And being a part of the community here allows me to feel that flow and to be a part of something that's way bigger than me. And, you know, you know, for instance, I, I started painting in oil about two weeks ago and I spent a week with my oil canvas on the table, everything meticulously arranged, all my little jars, the things I wasn't familiar with, all these new materials. And it was all set up exactly like I would watercolor paint this intricate thing. And I'm watching a documentary because that's how I paint all these watercolors. I watch documentaries and I paint these tiny little lines on and on and on. And suddenly I realized I need to stand up and I've never painted standing up. I put that thing up on an easel, stood up, turned off the documentary and put jazz music on. Now I'm standing up, I'm holding the paintbrush out at the end and I'm not really I'm not really doing everything on purpose. I'm now suddenly I'm putting paint onto something and seeing where it goes and seeing where it develops. And that's been, I think, a good way to describe the past year of my life. And I think maybe a lot of other people too. Yes. <laughs> now going back to inspiration. You have spoken a lot about your girlfriend and your dad. So talk to us oh, a little yes. bit about how both of them have influenced Steven yeah. and the Steven that it's actually an artist, part of this amazing creative village community. Well, my dad, my dad, he is a wild man. He is an absolute wild man. Um, I think one of the best pieces of advice my dad ever gave me, and he's famous for this, 
go until you hear glass. That's, that's his mentality and that's how he operates. Go until you hear glass. Just keep going and figure it out. And he, at some point you'll know when you've gone too far because you'll hear the glass back away. <laughs> um, so for, for instance, these frames back here, I had these paintings and I needed frames. You know, I can't buy a bunch of frames. I'm not really sure what to do about frames. I don't know what the frame should look like. So my dad said, well, let's just make some frames, like make frames. We're going to make frames. Like, do you have any idea how hard it is to make frames? <laughs> so, you know, I go over to my dad's. I take some of my paintings and he puts some pieces of wood together. And we spend the day putting, putting wood together, coming up with ideas. And he, he, we just keep moving forward like that. Um, you know, when the pandemic first started, uh, I came here to help my parents with the pandemic uh, and with all the stuff that we all went through and I was out there day after day after day and um, I met this amazing girl um, who I never would have seen I never would have been here I never would have seen I never would have slowed down enough to see anything if it hadn't been for that pandemic and I did I slowed down I started seeing things I started noticing things I started going in directions that I'm sort of being moved in. I met Kristen and, um, you know, she's inspired me to do amazing things. I got, I've been scuba diving since I met her. Um, you know, we've gone all over the place together in the pandemic. We drive everywhere. We don't fly anymore. So we see things that we wouldn't have seen flying over them at a million miles an hour. Um, you know, she's the one that said, look, talk to them about a space. Maybe you can get a space at this art place. And, you know, she's the one that's watching me pull my stuff out every morning, put it all away, you know, don't put it away. And then it's in the way. And it's like, you know, go over there, see what you can do. Go for it. Ask, just say something. Um, to the paintings, I mean, I've got paintings up that she's directly responsible for inspiring me to do. Um, yeah, every day. Every day. Every day is an amazing day. What's the feedback that you have received from people when they come to your studio and they start <laughs> seeing your art on the walls and they start saying, wow, you created this. What's the story behind this? What's the feedback that you have received from them? I'm, people like my stuff and sometimes I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm constantly amazed by the reactions that I get from people. They want to hear the story behind the painting. They want to know what boat that is. Where was I when I, you know, what, what did I do with that boat? Um, you know, they want to hear the stories and there's a million stories behind every one of these things. <laughs> um, and, you know, they, you know, they, they will connect with something. They will connect with, with this one or they'll connect with one that I'm not really a big fan of and somebody will connect with that and that's their favorite painting they've ever seen. Um, it's, it's, it's amazing to hear their stories that they get inspired to tell me after looking at one part of one painting or some element over here or what I told them about that leads them to tell me some astounding story that, you know, that I never would have had the opportunity to hear. So again, it's this energy that we all start to move with and we all feel it. And we can we can experience a more amazing world, you know, together. If you were able to choose one among the ones that you have on the walls right now, which one will be your favorite, and why? Oh. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, or maybe that story that connected with you in more personal level than others. Or maybe something that you remember from that specific day, from those ships that you have taken around the world. Yeah. Well, this this painting here is the uh, sail training vessel from Japan that I got to run for a while. Um, that was the first time I saw the Golden Gate Bridge. Was sailing under that bridge on on the deck of that ship. Wow. Um, that was an amazing day. That picture reminds me when I see it of that amazing day. Um, 
you know, this, this painting here is based on a, a photograph that I got from an old, old friend of mine um, who used to run big old square riggers 100 years ago, or it seems like, an ancient old guy. Um, you know, that guy was a mentor of mine for many years, so that reminds me of him. Um, you know, I've got, I've got paintings over here that are almost mystical, mystically connected to, to my girlfriend, um, that have an amazing meaning built into them that I didn't build into them. They, they got built in just in the process of making them. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know about a favorite one. I think there's one, you know, there's, there's a couple in my head that I'm always thinking of the next one. I'm always thinking about what's here. Like, like, you know, even after all of this, I finish it and I'll put it up and I'll enjoy telling stories about it. And I'll enjoy hearing people tell me stories that they think about. But as soon as I'm done with it, there's another one. And that's my favorite one. The one I haven't done yet. The one that's coming. That one. That's my favorite. Talking about what's coming <laughs> and what's coming for you. Well, I'm, I'm experimenting with oils. I've got, I've got two more, I've got two more sailboats that I have in, in my head that have to come out. But I have some oil painting ideas, which I have no idea how to do. I have <laughs> no idea how to use oil. And I have some ideas there that I want to get out. Um, another big thing that I'm putting together now is a bow building program, which has nothing wow. to do with any of this. Um, I, got, I started a nonprofit and I uh, am gonna start a program that I used to do in California where we bring uh, the community in and build these little boats together as a, as a community effort and as a way to, uh, especially with a lot of the kids around here, to get them to work together and get them to see that the world is a lot bigger than, than they realize. So that is another thing that um, I hope to be able to somehow incorporate into Favo a little bit. Of course. Um, I'm going to be working on that as well as more paintings. That's good. That's right. <laughs> so very busy, which is amazing. Uh, yeah. Right? I'm very busy. I love to be busy. Nice. So what are you expecting from... Favo as a creative village in the upcoming months, maybe years, after you have been here for such a short period of time and this is giving you the opportunity to showcase your talent. The thing that has struck me the most about being here has been the community aspect of Favo and how everyone works together and moves together and creates together and helps each other and we all help each other move forward on all of this stuff. What I would like to see, I can imagine a lot of growth, even with how amazing that is, I think we can do it better. I think we can reach even higher than we, than we do here. And you know, your efforts to, are, are bringing us together. Um, I learned things from watching your previous episodes about my friends here that I, I, you know, I don't know how long it would have taken for them to get around to telling me some of those things. And I learned more things, um, you know, so that helps. It shows me and it shows the rest of us that, yeah, we can, we can, we can do be even better than we're doing now. We can, we can, we can reach farther. We can. Yes. We will. We are. We're moving. Yes. Moving yeah. towards that. Yeah. Which yeah. is great. It's fantastic. Where can people follow you on social media? I have an Instagram account at Sailing Over the Edge. I think it's at Sailing Over the Edge. If that's how it works, I'm not a it professional yeah. social media. I have so I have sailingoverthedge.com as well. It's a website that needs a bit of work. Um, everyone on your episodes says the same thing, so that's <laughs> hilarious. Uh, but I do post on my Instagram account. I post my work as it's progressing, and then I post the finished work, and I can be contacted there easily. And I also have the website sailingoverthedge.com. So so now, Stephen, before we leave. What can you tell our audience as a message? If you were given the chance to give them a piece of advice, whatever comes from your heart that can help them pursue their dream. 
Don't hide it under the bed. <laughs> Don't hide it under the bed. Get it out. Let people see it. They want to see it. It doesn't matter what you think about it. They want to see it and you can change the world with it and you can figure out a way to move it forward. You can figure out a way to change people and you can figure out a way to change the world. It's just a matter of, of getting it out from under the bed. It really is. That's true. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen, for joining us for episode 95 of our awesome. Artistic Spot. Yes. We're Thank so happy you. to have, have you as part of our story. Thank you for joining us and for accepting our invitation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very, very much. And for those of you, our audience, don't forget to tune us back in next week in our Artistic Spot, where you are also the artist. And before we go, please subscribe to our Artistic Spot channel on YouTube and follow us on Instagram, RJJ Design, and Facebook, JJ Art and Design. This has been Jose Rodriguez Marmo, and I'm your host in Artistic Spot, where you are also the artist. Thank you.